my dad used to own all this. Rumor has it you were kicked by a horse. What do you think of that view? You're beating somebody out that lived here for 40 years. They're sitting on how many millions do you think this is? People don't really understand what's going on, so they have a problem with it on both sides. I was under the impression ranchers sell their land, they're loaded, but you're saying that's not the case here. Was forced to sell it to the government, $250,000 with the land. Wow. <laughs> I've moved from these locations because I was in that position. How do you feel about the bear in the house? Two years ago, I could have built this house for half what I could build it for right now. Okay. Those people we didn't get along with very well. Because why? Human nature says, I want a house here, but I don't want anyone else to have a house here. Basically, we're standing right now for cowboys and cows. We used to roam. Good afternoon, guys, here in beautiful Montana. Have a very interesting story for you today. And that is the tension between ranchers who own all this land and developers that want to subdivide and build. Now that's been going on for a long time in Montana and the West, but the last two years have really accelerated the process. So today we have the great privilege to meet with a local who was a rancher and cowboy for 20 years, but is now developing. He said he knows the situation inside and out on both sides of the argument. Let's go meet up with him and learn what's going on here. Let's do this. Nice to meet you. So my dad used to own all this property right here where these houses are. My dad actually had a head injury, so he was completely disabled for about 17 years. I was involved in selling part of this just to make it through that time period. That's my dad and Hello, mother. sir. And you see dad's face over there. He just got kicked by a horse two days ago. That's why he's all messed up. Can we go meet dad? Yeah. yeah he's a character. Rumor has it you were kicked by a horse. Is that, yeah, is that a few one? times. Uh, <laughs> we used to own from here all the way down past where you see those houses. Yep, we just came that way. Is it bittersweet, like you were sad to sell it, but then it also it's beneficial, or how's that feeling? I don't know that that was really beneficial. <laughs> no, not really. It, got us, it barely got us by, and then after that, it's one-time deal. You get, You sell the land, you get one chunk of money. Oh, so you guys didn't subdivide it? No. Uh, oh, so you sold to someone, they split it up. Right? Yeah, because yeah, it costs a lot of money to subdivide something. Lots all of that money. infrastructure going you in. You got to put in all the roads and the power and everything like that. So we just sold it because we needed money right then. And, you know, that's gone in a year. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you buy horses from the, from the natives? Used to, yeah. but then they started doing trail rides, so they didn't want to sell us any horses. Okay. okay. But I'll tell you what they, <laughs> they still do is they still... Whatever comes to their house in the spring, they brand it. Yeah, who, we don't really know whose horses they are when we buy them. <laughs> the series Yellowstone, you saw part of it, right? Like, they sort of got it right with the tension between the locals, the big money coming in from the cities, and then the, the natives, right? Is that a realistic thing, or is that, like, far off Hollywood? Narrative Part of stuff. that is, is far off Hollywood because the, the reservations really aren't concerned about getting more land. They don't really, that that's not something we ever hear about anyway. Okay. Or anything. It's, um, yeah, I mean, we got along with them really well. I mean, it, it's, there. it's a different world sometimes when you're dealing with two different cultures. If you go up there and you say you're going to be there on Wednesday, you show up, they may not be ready for you at all. And you're like, what? well, we told you you're going to be here on Wednesday. And they're like, well, which Wednesday? You didn't say which Wednesday. I mean, it, time is a completely relative term. They're very, very untrusting and they're very protective of each other. And all of them have nicknames. Okay. Like dudes and pickles, yeah. mouse. So so I called up, because I, I lost Mouse's phone number. I called everywhere around that I could think of and asked for you know, if they could tell me how to get a hold of Mouse. They won 100% had never heard of Mouse. <laughs> 
So I gave his real name. Boy, never heard of that. And I'm calling all the neighbors now, you know. So I've got to talk to him about some horses that he has for me that I've got to get up and buy horse. Oh, horses. You're talking about horses. Yeah, yeah. We, we can tell you how to get a hold of Mouse. And then they would give me the phone number. Oh. <laughs> and that's my cousin. They said, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you have to have true connections to get in there. you got to have some connections. Yeah. Which is sort of cool in a way, too, once you, get, once you get those connections. Yeah. yeah. The problem is the, the fellas that we dealt with over years are kind of getting pretty aged or dying or dead, you know, so okay. it's so hard we've to lost find those connections. some of the <laughs> newer ones. Oh, that The gotcha. ones that dad, we had is because dad used to ride there as a kid. So those guys are gone. Your that's parents' old house was that one right there. there. Yeah. And that's, someone lives there now? Someone lives there now, yeah. They sold that and you guys are building this one. Yep, building this place right here. We've, we've owned it for many years, but... Um, and this is all your land? Up to the railroad tracks. Okay. It's it's not very big. What I've been seeing in my limited time on this trip, two and a half weeks from Texas all the way up to here, I was under the impression ranchers sell their land, they're loaded, set for life, but you're saying that's not the case here. It, it depends on how much land you have. If you've got a couple thousand acres in an area that's okay, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. a, a decent area that people want to move to, it's either development or somebody who's really, really wealthy, somebody from Microsoft, which is what we have here. They, okay. they buy the big stuff, you know, but these, these ranchers don't really know what to do with it anyway. I mean, if you've grown up all your life, this is what you do is ranch all yep. your life. Yep. And then somebody comes along and offers you $50 million for your ranch. For one thing, they'll say no, because they're always thinking their kids are gonna do it. But right now, in, the, in what we're what we're running into is the kids don't want to do it anymore because they're seeing what their parents have done i mean my friends that are ranchers they they don't go on vacation you know they've been on four vacations in the last 20 years you know and they live and work on the ranch when they, I mean, they get up the kids help them you did this lifestyle for 20 years 20 years now you're doing real estate so i managed this horse leasing business for 20 years okay and you know i started out as a teenager living out here in a camper there was nothing here there was not a corral there wasn't a house there was nothing then i got married at 18 managed that business because my dad was injured did she move into the camper no no i had a house that was about 15 miles from here okay okay so so we drove here every day and through those years you know you'd work long long hours in the morning at six o'clock i'd go change the neighbor's water lines Okay. And then come back here, do that. I'd leave for two days to go to the Bob Marshall Wilderness to pack for an outfitter. Meaning you pack up mules, because mm -hmm. everything has to be packed in and out on mules. And you pack up mules and pack in guests. Okay. And then pack stuff back out, meat and hay and things like that. And then come back here, ride for a rancher, meaning you move cows for him and work for him basically and make some extra money. And then go do the, the horse leasing again and then put up hay so all you're doing is working working solid from from five o'clock in the morning until dark or even staying somewhere overnight and and still we were and you get a flat tire and you don't have enough money to fix your flat tire i mean that was that tight of a budget you're just breaking even you're just breaking even at some point i'm like there's there's got to you got to go at this a different way you got to get out of it make money to get back in so why do people <laughs> why do people stay in? It's because they what what they know, or it, they absolutely love it. Well, here's the thing: you talk to somebody, and it's like, well, you could buy, you sell this place, right, and go buy another ranch in Oklahoma, or at the other side of Montana, or whatever. But it's, where it's cheaper, where it's a lot cheaper. They won't do that because they're tied to that specific land. It's almost like a spiritual tie to land land has a grab on you and you won't understand it until you deal with families who are who are five generation ranchers it's not that they want land it's that they want that land so the locals are getting squeezed out or can't afford or what's totally the story can't afford because everybody wants to move to montana the land thing has become a big issue there isn't any more land 
Obviously. There isn't land. I drove through just pasture after pasture after pasture. There is land, but just not for sale, right? There's land, but not for sale. Or not for, it, or it hasn't been developed. So you can't build on it. So that's where the friction is right now, correct? With these old communities. And then if a rancher sells off, like did your dad have a problem with that? Because there are say 20, 30 new houses because he sold the land. So people don't really understand what's going on. So they have a problem with it on both sides. Okay. So they're like, oh, why isn't there cheaper housing? And so they're upset that you're selling a house for, you know, X amount of money. Okay. But technically you're selling it for that because there's such high demand for a very, very little amount of real estate. So they don't want you to develop anything, which would actually drop the price because yep. you'd have a supply but you don't want to develop the really good land. I mean, look at this view. Yeah. I mean, why would you want to develop that if this is your house? I mean, look at that. Exactly. You don't want a bunch of houses there. What is the dynamic between those coming in from the cities and the locals? Different ideologies, of course, but it, I guess it depends who you're dealing with or what, what's your thoughts on that? You know, a couple years ago. Yeah. The people who were coming in here were coming in because it's beautiful and they want part of Montana and they want to basically come in and lock the gate behind them. Okay. Those people we didn't get along with very well. Because, Why? Because they brought their ideology with them from where they didn't want to be in the first place. But now the people who are coming from the pandemic are not quite the same people. Most of them are coming from because they want what we have here. The more freedom, the, the, the ability to raise your kid the way you want it and have it in a school that's small so you can know, know everybody in the community and things like that. And those people fit in much better. Two years ago, I could have built this house for half what I could build it for right now. And here's the problem with that in, with the locals. So somebody's selling a house somewhere in California, let's use that, okay? Yeah. And it's high real estate values. They come over here with a chunk of money. Somebody that's living in Townsend, they don't have that chunk of money. So if they want to go from this house to that house, that cost has more than tripled in the last two years. They can't, they don't make any more money. The inflation is killing them on, because they're making the same amount of money. Now the expenses are more. Okay. And they can't step up. So there's nowhere for them to go. Does that build the tension in the community? Is there resentment? Is there's, there... there's resentment there for that because, because when somebody comes in with money, you're just viewed as somebody with money, even though you, you may have gotten your money from a very legitimate thing or you believe the same things and it doesn't really matter. You're, you're beating somebody out that lived here for 40 years yeah. that now can't afford the house that you just bought. So I've been on both sides of that. I lived in Lake Tahoe, late 90s, early 2000s, and especially at those times, there was no way I was buying a house. So I moved to Reno, Nevada, because I could buy a house there. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, oh, Reno, what a, what a hole, which it was, still sort of is, but it's gotten a lot better. Anyway, so I had to move, right? And then I've lived in San Francisco. There's no way I was going to buy a, a million and a half fixer-upper. So I've moved from these locations because I was in that position. So I, I was just a realist, like, not going to happen for me. I'm getting out of here. Now I'm on the other side, bought a house in Florida, my wife and I live in. And mm -hmm. by me buying a house, I help drive up real estate, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm part of it. I don't want to be a hypocrite with it. And that's the thing is that I think you got to realize that you can't be against these people. You have to realize what, what is actually going on. That doesn't mean you can stop it. You can't stop it from happening. You yeah. just have to understand, if you want to do better, you may have to move to a, an area like Reno. People would rather complain about it, though, than actually go do what's hard. Yeah. So yeah. You, you have to do what's hard to actually get to where people are that have what you want. And that should motivate you. That should. It doesn't usually, but it should. That's why there's so much opportunity in the world. Lots of people focus on the negative, but that means there's positive there, too. That means there's things that people won't do, so why don't you go do them? So this is the, the old Geiger homestead. Geiger homestead. The Geigers came out here in about 1900. Homesteading, they passed the Homestead Act to get people to move out here. Yeah. And basically, you could move on to a 160-acre plot of land and then prove it up, which means to prove it up, you had to live here and actually make it pay 
for a specific period of time. And then if you did that, you were able to go file documents that gave you the land. So they did that. Obviously you can see the cabin on the left there. That's what they started with. Obviously you build that first because you're trying to get something up quick. Winters here are brutal, especially in something like that, as you can imagine. Yep. And then once they made it, then they built that part. And then their daughter, she married the only son of the Whitehead place, which is right over the hill here, connected to this place. And they made the two places one. How many acres are we on right now? So this is, I'm not sure, it's about 250. Okay. And then that's like 500 over there. So they made those two properties one place. And then the parents, once they died, they abandoned this place and moved over there. And then that place was sold in the 50s. That's Canyon Ferry Lake, which is a reservoir. Okay, so that dam was put in in 1955. Okay. That's part of this story. The guy that whose ranch was underneath that lake was forced to sell it to the government for that particular lake to be put in. And he came up here and bought this property from the Geigers in, in the 50s. It was like Three River Gorges right. in China. Right. Except that he got money for it instead. Yeah. Instead and of like, get out. They hold a major grudge. Still to this day. Oh yeah, because they didn't get what the property was worth. They got what the government would give them. They couldn't replace it, but they did replace it with some really nice land here. They yeah. lost that place. I mean, you could say that they up, upsold to here, but you didn't see under the lake. It was pretty cool. <laughs> okay, but to be fair, that was a long time ago and they're sitting on, how many millions do you think this is? This is priceless because you can't, you, you're not making this anymore. This is like something you can actually access, but has trees. You're right up next to the mountains. This borders Forest Service, and then this is all the Elkhorn Mountains. So this is full of elk. I mean, elk are coming down in here. This is one of the most beautiful places I've been. It's got something to it, energetically. Yeah, yeah. Like this Isn't wind it? coming through and these grasses and these clusters of aspen trees. The big fields, rolling hills off to a lake and mountains, clouds, and then this. You just, there are many stories that happen in here, right? Absolutely. And now the story is cow poop. It, it, yeah. <laughs> the story is cow. <laughs> they have kind of taken it over. <laughs> they had the to burn brick. a lot of wood, that's for sure, to keep this place warm, I'm guaranteed. Oh yeah. So every, every room when they built the house back then had a chimney in it. Fireplace. Right, so you think it will fall over in a few years or? I'd say probably 20 years it's gonna fall over. Oh, birds yeah. coming out of here. <laughs> the pigeon kind of got you, huh? <laughs> All right, Trinity, you ready to get hit in the face with pigeons? Yeah, you gotta watch out for those. This was a, like a pantry cupboard. Okay, pantry cupboard? Because this was the kitchen. Look at that, it's like a picture. Yeah, what do, you, what do you think of that view? That's your kitchen view. And then um, this place used to sell milk to the miners who were up here. That's one of the ways they made money. Yeah, I don't feel bad for these people. They landed on something amazing. How do they feel about us walking around it, by the way? Um, I. I talked to him this morning. So you know the guy that owns this land? Oh yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Okay. And there's two types of people who, who inherit ranches. And some of them inherit them as like, uh, you know, I this should be mine. because And it's just kind of because they're brought up that way. And then there's Corey. He feels he needs to earn it. And he, he works more than anybody I've ever seen. He wants to run it, but not run it halfway. He wants to run it better than anybody else did before him. I don't know if you can imagine going through a winter. You were talking about like the the uh, sound of the wind through the trees. That has a completely different sound in the middle of winter when there's no leaves on the trees and this is barren, blowing snow and cold and dark. I'm trying to think of where the wildflowers would be because there's there's patches of those like, like yellow and pink and everything all over the place up here. Especially up there. Oh, the wow. Look at this. The miners that came here, I mean, I'm sure they missed gold everywhere. There's probably pockets of gold and big veins of gold and they've gotten all the easy stuff. 
right so for example bottoms. this i don't know if we're gonna pick it up on the camera but too far away that's a mine up there right it's a mine tailing so basically what they were doing they were testing to see if there was gold there and obviously there wasn't because there's not a big mine so okay my question was there's got to be so much gold left because they haven't been able to go into every bit of rock and you haven't they've tested where they think there could be gold so there's a lot of a lot of areas even remote areas that you're like how did they get here what if your buddy who owns this he could start tapping in where he wanted right and if he hits gold he hits gold you know what makes ranching and farming the easiest what? is when you hit oil that doesn't tear your land up at all because all you have is a one or one or two oil wells sitting here and there right and it's just pumping just money pumping all money. day long right makes ranching pay very well wow. <laughs> look at this so look from an outsider's perspective this is something so special you you don't want it to be developed but you want to live in it and that's why we're flawed exactly that's human human nature says i want a house here but i don't want anyone else to have a house here this is kind of like a, a, de a newer development of towns and this is what a lot of the areas that people sell ranches that people sell turn into this is one of our projects and we're building this for for a person how long have you had this company for about five years i've been in construction in this business for about eight or ten years now okay and so you're building for people coming to town yeah is there a battle in this would you say because you've seen the ranching side you saw the beauty we were just at you don't want to lose the beauty there is a How battle internally feel? because when i see when i see you know places get developed is where the battle is when they're already developed and the houses are going all in it's like you're not going to run cows on five acres you know or two acres or something there's no stopping that and it, the other thing is is allowing people the freedom to do what they want to do too so right it's like some people say well we just need to stop all people from coming to montana and building on this land and everything but you you can't really that's why i feel you have to help the rancher make money so he doesn't develop land that's the only way out you can't stop people from coming because they want to come here right and i believe in freedom so i believe they have the freedom to do that okay so basically we're standing right now we're cowboys and cows used to roam used to roam just a few years ago mm -hmm. and that's the change and now we have a beautiful home mm -hmm. nice place with a beautiful view so what's a home like this these days would you say that's probably eight hundred thousand dollars seven hundred fifty to eight hundred thousand okay on one acre place like this same thing that's maybe a little less. Yeah, yeah, probably in the 650,000 range. Can you imagine, like, a year and a half or two years ago, when you could sell a house for 850 or 900,000 in some other city in the country, and then come here and build that for 250,000 dollars? Building that for 250. Yeah, with the land. Wow. <laughs> People were have a job at Home Depot selling something coming out here and buying these places and going to work at the home depot in helen and pocketing five hundred thousand dollars i mean it was happening quite often there's something that's difficult to tell this story is that ranchers a lot of them don't want to be on camera they're afraid to show exactly what they do they're afraid of the outside judgment of what they do because they hear it a lot they hear the outside judging them for you know being mean to their cattle for just doing the normal things to cattle you know raising cattle but i think that's changing a little bit in one regard is because they they're, they're beginning to understand that if they don't speak up they're going to get overridden without ever saying anything right oh yeah for sure they'll get rolled and i think that's why this series from west texas all the way to here i've gotten ranches that have wanted to speak a lot of these ranchers the ones i've met it's um salt of the earth type people work super hard leave me alone mentality yes everyone stay out of my life let me do my thing i'm not going to tell you how to live just don't tell me how to live mm -hmm. right and they and, thought they could get by with that and they thought they could get by with it but a lot of people moving into these places don't have that same ideology 
Mm -hmm. They're more vocal about how things should be done. And yeah. there's that there's that friction right now. And they're more willing to, to tell that, you know, to say it publicly. They, they feel, and, and this, what I'm talking about is the people that are against ranching or against uh, raising animals for human consumption or whatever, feel that it's socially acceptable to say those things in public where ranchers feel that it's not or have felt it's not okay to say that in public right so now they're saying they're thinking we have to tell this side of the story or it's or we're extinct i have no problem for anyone's views if they're against ranching and against me absolutely i would say educate as much as you can because i knew nothing two and a half weeks ago mm -hmm. i have a lot more of an education now um but if you're going to hold true to the values then you got to be a little smarter about it, meaning if you're totally against cows, being a vegan is not enough. Right. You can't wear leather, mm -hmm. nail polish off limits, right? You have to all, know what comes all, out of a cow. A lot of the product, I didn't know nail polish came from cows, but I yeah. learned that. And a lot of the things we use come from cows. So if someone stays true to those values, I can respect that. Absolutely. But it's if they- It's a little hard if they don't. Exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit hypocritical. It is. So old building in downtown. Go step in that hole. Okay, so you're making <laughs> you're making apartments here. The, the top, the top of this building is apartments. We're okay. selling these, and then the bottom would be commercial space. This is an old building, obviously. So it, you know we left the, the original beams that are holding. Oh, that's so cool. In this one, we were able to leave the original brick exposed. Oh, great. So, Kind of a cool little place. Oh, wow, so huge in here. See, now I would call this small. <laughs> well, I'm thinking like a studio apartment, yes. or one bedroom, it's, it's a nice space so here. these are two bedroom, two bath. So these places are now going to be sold to the locals because they can't afford to buy a house. And they're, Young couples they're that... okay with living in an apartment setting. Right. And definitely young couples. Young that couples, because yeah. you know, you gotta you don't have to manage out. anything here, it's easy. Yeah. So what's the price of something like this when it's done? This is now like $340,000 okay. for one of these. This is kind of neat, you know, for Townsend, this is nothing like this. Right, how are the locals this. taking to this? Or they just don't love know it. yet, they love it. See, because now we're taking something that was, that did look horrible, was a total eyesore for the community and making it into something that looks really nice. Yeah. You know, so that they really like this stuff. It is absolutely beautiful. You did a great job with this, Trinity. Really cool. And I love the wood framing around the windows. Yeah. Isn't that cool? It kind of gives it a rustic feel. What a cool little town you got. I like it. Yeah, it's busy too, huh? <laughs> We're going to get some food This here. is one really big problem in Townsend is, is food. They're not but, open. But so. look at this place. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we're gonna do, you said the subs are excellent, right? Uh, excellent, they're very, very good. So, so how, do you, how do you get someone excited about moving into town if the, all the restaurants are closed? That's a problem. So Mondays are really tough because there's like one restaurant that's open right now. So we were gonna do a little food sequence here, but it's not happening in Townsend today. So we're going to, you said, a very beautiful ranch, correct? Yes, a very beautiful place. Very secluded, extremely secluded. So that house right there is where you live for how long? As a teenager, that was just me. I wasn't with my parents. My parents lived in Helena and I would go back there every weekend and I'd go fishing in this creek every, every evening. Massive ranch, huh? We're talking 300, 400,000 acres, maybe more than that. I have no idea. So, like a, a small European country, basically. Yeah. A bit and of an exaggeration. It's that. an interesting story. I would love to talk to those guys because there's two brothers that married only children who were females that were in, going to inherit massive ranches. Both of the brothers did. Like, we're talking the, the biggest ranches in Montana. I would love to hear the story on that. <laughs>
What elevation are we at now? Now we're about 6,500, something like that. Okay, 6, so, so we climbed high. about 3,000 maybe yeah. from Townsend? And this, this, so this area gets a lot of snow. What are these, bunk houses? So these were bunk houses. Now they're, they're bunk houses that people rent out. So part of what ranchers are doing to make money to, to save, to keep their place from development, like this place, you can book a cattle drive here. Okay. So you can come stay in these bunk houses and then go on a, on a cattle drive and you can hunt here. You can pay to hunt here, things like that. On top of their ranching, that's actually paying them probably more than the ranching itself. This is an extremely land rich, cash poor situation. So what looks from the outside is someone that's very wealthy. It might not be the case. They're just sitting on the land. Right. And a lot of times people see people like that have land like this, they'll always have a new pickup. You know, they'll run around on four wheelers. Everything looks groomed. It's nice place. But that's because they have to have it that way to like present to guests and things. But when you have a place as big as that, like Galt, he has a helicopter that he flies because you can't get from one end of his place to the this other. This ranch has a helicopter. Neighbor. Oh, the neighbor, Galt, Has okay. a helicopter. It's actually cost effective for him to be able to check on something 25 miles away with a helicopter rather than have to drive there and take a whole day to do it, you know? So their profit margins are like 1%. <laughs> yeah, I or don't know. something even, ridiculous. They're ridiculous. I was talking to a rancher the other day and we were talking about that and he's like, well, on a good year, you know, we're looking for like two to three hundred dollars profit per calf. Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you know, then you have the cow that you've raised for three years to get the first calf from. So you have to feed that cow and keep it for three years. How long does it take to pay that off with two or three hundred dollars out of the calf? And he's like, we don't want to think about that. <laughs> so here we have the rooms. Mm -hmm. Can I open one? I don't know, they're probably locked. Though. They're not locked. There we go. Wow. Isn't that cool? Bear pelt. So that's an elk. Oh, okay, elk pelt. And then log cabin style. Very nice. Hey, let's leave the link to these guys. Yeah. Did, yeah. Are, Battle, they look, are they Battle looking Creek for people? Ranch. Battle Creek Ranch. Mm -hmm. Are they renting these now? They're coming up here like in the next few days to like get it ready. Okay, so this is the start of the season. Yeah, so like barely, and we're, we're getting here like they haven't had any, they haven't even been here yet. And we're almost in mid-June. Yes. So, so the very, is very short. Very short summer here. Very short. And then we got the classic barns. Literally, you can't hear a train, you can't hear a vehicle, you don't hear an airplane going over, you hear absolutely nothing out here but the sound of what it, what it sounded like a hundred years ago. These people are so nice. The Rickmeyers are great people. It's okay to go in? Yeah, I think we'll go in. There's a bear in here. There's a bear in here. Wow. How do you feel about the bear in the house? Do you do you like that? Is that your style, Trinity? Uh, I don't think it's my wife's style. They have game all over the place yes. here. Moose. Well, because this is a hunting lodge as well. Okay. So this is what a hunting lodge looks like. They always put the game inside. Yep. It's a bit creepy, I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, it's creepy, yeah. A little bit, no? These are you're used to it, but oh, yeah. Wouldn't be my first choice, but hey, we're all different. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. All right, end of the road, huh? End of the road. Thank you. Absolutely. Trinity. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Bringing us in because this is a world most of us don't have any clue about. Like most issues in life, it's super complicated. You can see the ranching perspective. You can see the local perspective. You can see the person moving in perspective. I see your perspective foot in both worlds there's no easy answer right and wrong or solution i would say definitely no easy solution that's for sure okay and i also want to mention guys trinity has an awesome youtube channel super knowledgeable as you could see today and he understands ranching and cowboying it's all about this part of the world right absolutely the reality of what it's like out here and being at one with with what's going on with your food and with life you know this part of life and it's done there's a lot of stuff like not like you online but there's a lot of stuff online 
that's educational, that gets a bit boring, his content doesn't get boring. It's really interesting. And that's it, guys, from Montana. Thanks for coming along.